it's interesting playing like double drum set. I mean, I guess we both have a lot of extra little bits, but like double complex drum set yes. where the the type of playing that we're engaging with as well, like I'm curious, like, like even just to listen to it outside of the context of playing in it, what fuses into one. So we'll have like timbres because we have like sort of both have like bell like timbres. We both have dry timbres. We both have low timbres. We all have these different things, but do they do they fuse into one thing? Is it two separate identities? Do aspects of it fuse into one? like what the you know? It's interesting because of the the instruments themselves are, are really broad and complex. That the overlap is is much blurrier than say for example if you're playing piano and I was playing guitar yeah, or something course. like like the identity of each instrument unless you're physically watching us um, dissolves a little bit which is kind of uh, interesting I, I don't often play with like another drummer or percussionist or like this kind of sound um, I mean what what's been your experience with something like that I mean it's not a thing that I've done that often also or almost none at all. Especially when considering uh, drummers, percussionists, in this sense of approach. Because I tend to look at this that we both do, in, in each of us, on its own way, as like uh, the prepared piano techniques, or prepared guitar techniques, or any preparation technique. I see this really as prepared drums, because you're taking typical drum sets, it's not even a crazy percussion set, mm -hmm. it's really a drum set, and then you have all these uh, approaches which tended not to be the typical ones, mm -hmm. either with things on top or by playing with other techniques on the, the things are, as they are by themselves, or just because you look for not so typical kind of, of, of sounds like the alloy of the cymbals and everything mm -hmm. that's here. So in that sense, it's something that I've not done, done that much. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as difficult as playing with a prepared piano, let's say, yeah. with that kind of quest also or with uh, any kind of improvised, improv improvisation musician who's into this kind of, of extending limits approach. Hmm. And I, what, what you're putting out there is, I think, what we all have as challenges, also playing by ourselves. Hmm. Like, if you want to be as one, or have like different kind of universes at the same time, and if you're portraying really chaos, or if you're doing, if you're being really functional and conceptual, I think the challenge is exactly the same with two people, summing up that you're playing the same kind of, of sound, so it, the, the possibility of everything overlapping is just so big. Yeah. And I know it's a, it's a nice challenge, but sometimes, and it happened now also, it's so interesting because sometimes when you're with someone like, like in the same kind of, of, of thing, Sometimes it feels like, oh, this is something I could have done. Was it me doing it? No. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. sometimes it does feel like one unique entity. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think particularly as we're both playing, like there's there's moments where, I mean, I, I obviously know what sounds were coming from near me, even if like if they were dependent of my, independent of my movement. But like there's bits like where, let's say we both had like the resonant bells happening while other things were going on, that the those bells become a part that's separate from... yeah. yeah what each one of us is doing exactly. and on top of what each one of us is doing mm -hmm. in a way that that is kind of interesting because like like it's almost as if each of us had a third arm yeah, yeah in the world that i was doing so like we were playing a duet but like there was a part of of what was happening that wasn't me and wasn't you yeah, 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 yeah. and it wasn't like some kind of like magical symbiotic thing like it wasn't like this kind of thing either it's just the sort of timbres and the overlap tend to create and that, that third extra entity. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or fourth or fifth or, you know, like, depending on the different, the timbres and stuff. And it's interesting also just to see, like, the the approaches to the instrument, because they're both fundamentally drum sets. Yeah. They're kind of drum right. sets with stuff on them. And how, um, I mean, I don't know if, if, if you would agree with this, but it feels or it sounds to me like that, that because of the sounds that you have and, and the sort of the, the instrument that you've crafted... Yours for me sounds a lot more like percussion. I don't mean percussion as in like maracas or anything, but I mean like as in like like a, like a, a percussion set or something like like mm -hmm. in, like like the the timbres are, are like broader in that sense. Whereas um, for me, I feel this sounds drum city or something like like 
I, I don't know, that, that might be an oversimplification or something, but like, obviously we have musical personalities that come through and, and playing and things like that, but mm -hmm. like the, even just the sort of the timbres of stuff. Um, that, that says a lot, usually. Yeah, yeah. Only the timbre selection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, what, what, like, would you agree with that? Is that, is that something that like, uh, I, I think so. I mean, I've, I've never done, I, I don't have percussion yeah. or classical percussion or ear percussion in my, in my background. But I guess from the contemporary music that I listen to, it, it, it just happens. The same mm -hmm. way I listen to a lot of other stuff from non-percussionists, non-drummers, mm -hmm. that I tend to try to embrace somehow. Sometimes that's the, like, like the zone for me, in terms of this quest for sounds. It probably has happened to you many times. Like when you're doing improvised section, uh, uh, sessions with uh, musicians you've never played before, especially, and each like their their own uh, universes of, uh, of of sounds and you go into the to the sessions you really dive in deeply hmm. not knowing what will happen and for me the, the the magical zone where i really love to be some time to time is when suddenly you're you're being challenged with a sound you want so much to make it happen also in your set but you have hmm. no idea how but you're not also consciously thinking about it so you're just making your way through, and then by the end, you just realize you just created a new technique. Hmm. That happened a lot of times with me, like magical connections with usually special people. Yeah. Special people with really special uh, timber hmm. searches. And suddenly, I have a new thing. Like, oh wow, this is possible also here. Hmm. And that's adding to the other kind, kind of, of discoveries like that is exactly what I'm for. Like, hmm. to embrace this, not as a drummer, perspective not as a percussion perspective but really as a I don't know this idea of something which is not this instrument and not any instrument just music and sound and in a note to P idea like with endless possibilities <laughs> that's what I'm for obviously yeah I think we're all searching for that somehow yeah and sometimes it does happen yeah I mean, it. Uh, absolutely yeah. I think it's, it's something that like uh, most improvisers would probably resonate with that and then I think most people who don't like improvise um, don't think that you know like it's like oh like we're just playing licks or we're just playing ideas but there's there's things that like you can be in a space where things happen beyond yourself uh, both in terms of like physical technique like beyond what you're able to do mm -hmm. but also like like brain wise and like like you will you will arrive at places that were not that are not of you yeah and mm -hmm. are not of you or, or not of the situation it, it's of some something else that like becomes yeah, it just becomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the special moments I remember. Like from every improvised thing I've done, those little flashes are are like the special moments, like epiphanies. Not yeah. that often, though. No, well, enough. That's how you grow. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Shall we chase some epiphanies? Yeah. Sure. I mean, <laughs> yes. That's what we're here for. And that's the other thing. How do you prepare? Yeah, it can be so many instruments. This right, <laughs> and yeah. you have to decide how will I start. At least how, the starting point. Most definitely, and then even because there's all the things that we hit, but then also the things that we hit them with change a lot. Yeah, you know, so it, it, yeah, there's a lot of decisions to make. Yeah, and I have a little bit of a pet peeve as well in that, like, not a pet peeve, but. I'm aware that like if, if I'm improvising and let's say we're playing and I'm like, oh, I, I, it's time for me to use this and I grab it and I kind of get everything ready and then I'm like, going to use a thing and then the musical moment may have passed, exactly. but then I'm like, fuck it, I'm here, I'm going to just do this for like, five, you know, like being able to be like, no, and like, like you still have to be in the moment because we have to prepare, like we have to like yeah, yeah, grab yeah. that thing and do the thing and it's like, is it still right? Okay, cool. And if it's not, be able to make it happen yeah, all the same, make it yeah. work all the same. Which is, yeah, it's tricky because like, it's like I'm, I'm placing a bet. I'm like, I think that it's we're going to play yeah, something yeah, yeah. and like, is it going to be this? No, it's not. <laughs> but because then it's a lot of stuff. It's what you put on the drum, but also what mallets or what... Yeah, stuff. totally. So it does take a little time enough for the moment to pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.